Ooh, kind of gray and poopy outside. But there was no way I was staying home today because the All-American Collector Show is back. So I'm headed in to the Glendale Civic Auditorium once again. Oh, it feels good to be back. The All-American Collector Show, or as it's better known, the Glendale Show, is one of the biggest and most perfectly curated vintage toy and advertising shows on the West Coast. It's legendary among collectors and more importantly, even more legendary Legendary among the vendors. So that's how you know it's good. I'm having a hard time readjusting to the mask mandates back in force in Southern California. But I'd wrap saran wrap around my face if I had to if it meant seeing all this rad stuff. Dude, I'm noticing a little bit of a theme today. I'm seeing a heck of a lot of Batman stuff I've never seen before. This is awesome. It's not just that table either. It's all over the place here. Even this right here might be a Lincoln Futura wind-up car. What the heck? If it is, that's the car they based the 1966 Batmobile on. No, not just based, built it on. Wow, that is incredibly cool. It must be incredibly rare, too. They do have a lot of stuff from my back in the day, as it were, here. I mean, I had this, I had these, I had those. But what I loved about the Glendale show last time I came is that most of the stuff is even before my time. I mean, truly antique and vintage stuff of the kind I've never seen before, which means I get to learn something new at each in every booth. Or if not learn something new, at least see something I've never seen in person before. Like, look at these. Look at these pieces of monster movie advertising. Uh... Amazing. These are incredible. Oh, wow. And look at all the Beatles memorabilia right here. Whoa, I've never seen this before. What the? An authentic Beatles wig? I might not have to get a haircut after all now. Wow, dude, look at that popsicle truck. Imagine playing with that. That is so cool. So many cool, unusual, old-school toys. Like, was this the Power Wheels of its day? Speaking of stuff I've never seen before, look at this. Building with clowns. Yeah, just like the professional architects do. Ooh, look at all those Micro Machine sets. Fake Tyler? Dude, I love toys. You guys know I'm obsessed with action figures in particular. But every time I come here, my attention quickly shifts from the toys to the advertising. There are so many cool signs in this place. Hand-painted wood, tin, porcelain, even paper. Everything from Santa Claus and Coca-Cola to, uh, you know, kaboom! I particularly love this juxtaposition here. Minefield and quiet, please. Baby sleeping. These are like two neighbors that don't get along. Dude, just look at this stuff. None of this stuff is exactly inexpensive anymore. Mainly because it's so hard to find these days, particularly in places like California. But it's incredible that there are still some places where you can actually buy this stuff. And it's the real deal, not flea market copies. Not that there's anything wrong with the copies. I myself would probably just go for the copy. I mean, this 1940s Dr. Pepper sign is like $2,500. Just this little crush push bar thing right here is $4.25. I'm not ashamed to say that's a little rich for my blood. But even if I can't own all of these, I do enjoy window shopping, let me tell ya. Dude, look at Fresh Up Freddy. How long's it been since you've seen him? I'll tell you how long it's been for me, and I'm in antique stores all the time. Since the last time I was at the Glendale show. Whoa, would you look at the shiny show? That Sinclair sign. A couple of grand right there. Sure is handsome looking. Oh, those signs are cool, especially that Dr. Pepper chalkboard right there. That rules. Not as much hand-painted stuff this time at the Glendale show, but you never know what might turn up. Ooh, got a couple of Ghostbusters here. Oh, dang, Pac-Man. Food Fighters. He-Man. Oh my gosh, it's Mighty Mouse. Hey, and Steve Urkel's car. Whoa, no way. Look at all the strawberry shortcake. You guys remember? Strawberry shortcake? It's been a hot minute since she was popular. My great-grandmother made me a strawberry shortcake blanket. When I was little, not gonna lie, I still have it. Hey man, there's nothing wrong with the shortcake. Dang, look at this. A Chipettes doll. I don't know if I've ever seen one of those. And check it out. Noah's Ark with all the animals. Even this werewolf bear. Do you remember that Sinclair sign back there? I fired off my look at the size of this thing way too soon because... Would you look at the size of these overalls? They're 
gargantuan. I mean, I've gained a lot of weight during the pandemic and whatnot. But it would still take two or three of me just to fill each one of them legs. You could fit me, Ma, Peepa, and everybody's mother-in-law in there. That is awesome. Oh, there we go. There's some hand-painted wooden signs. Dude, look at that. I love hand-painted pieces of advertising. This one looks like it might have been stenciled. This one looks like it must have been painted by a very talented sign painter, which is such an art form, both with the actual talented guys and, of course, the janky sort of DIY roadside attraction type, which I like a little better, personally. It's a taste thing. Whoa, speaking of wooden paint, look at that Studebaker. A lot of people don't know Studebaker was making wagons way before they were making cars, and this might be, might be, a salesman's sample. Oftentimes they would build small little wagons as displays or like a salesman sample to sell the real thing you know it could be that it could be a toy i'm not sure maybe one of you studebaker experts out there can let me know now what'd you say it was here we have a studebaker goat cart goat cart 1920s so you yes. could actually ship uh hook up a live goat to yes, that car indeed. and the kids were safe in in driving it with a goat on it you drove it just like a horse Drove it just like a horse. So both are right, it was real and a toy. That's incredible, now all I wanna do is have more kids so I can stick them in that wagon and hitch it up to a couple of goats. Those guys sure were friendly, which is what I like about this show. Every time I come here, somebody teaches me something new. Oh, look at that back there. Look at those bat masks, see? Look at all the Batman stuff this time. Oh, dude, I love seeing some 80s and 90s action figures. But I really love seeing these toy weapons. Remember when toy weapons were like a whole aisle of Toys R Us? And I'm not just talking BB guns, but all the fake machine guns and cap pistols. But it's just like unwrapped Halloween candy. It's gone the way of the dodo. The aisle, I mean. I mean, there's still plenty of truck stops where you can buy toy weapons. Not many houses you can trick or treat at and get a popcorn ball though, dude. Look at those old pump plates. Those are sick. I know, some people see my tattoos. They see an old, beat up, road worn punk rocker. They must think I'm super non-traditional, but I must say. You know how every old dude wants a gas pump? Well, well I've got to admit, so would I. That's how I know I'm getting older, because now I really want a gas pump. Wow, look at all this old advertising. But even better, look at the old packaging. Look at that Hershey's box right there. That is sick. There's something I just love so much about packaging design, both modern and vintage. You don't often think of the past and packaging design together. But even back in the 1800s, there was bright, full-color printed packaging design for almost everything. Yeah. Speaking of bright, full-color stuff, look at all the signs in this back corner over here. Look at this stuff, embossed, full-color, metal, porcelain, even some hand-painted wood. Hey, Yogi. Hey, Justin. Dude, all of these uh, smoking advertisements just remind me Remember how many commercials there used to be for them? I can take it for granted now that there's no commercials for smoking on TV. Back in the day, they were ubiquitous. All right, I'm trying to get a bird's eye view now. See some of the good stuff that I missed browsing around down there. I showed up kind of late. Ugh. Ah, hey there, Chucky. The Glendale show only goes until five o'clock. Look at these neat cardboard signs that were probably in an old grocery store. Look at that fresh hot peanuts one over there. Yeah, 1910, 1915? No, 19, 1900. 1900. 1900. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Like Look at that skate. That's for two feet. That's one, for two feet? One yeah. foot here and then one on either this oh, side. Oh, no so way. So you're right and foot or left foot. And yeah. pray that you don't... So you ride it like a skateboard. Yeah. yeah. And hope you don't end but up in with the this With this and hold on to this string. Yeah. Before skateboards. Yeah. yeah. And before safety. You pray before <laughs> Hopefully safety. not before hospitals. <laughs> he would never sell that toy. Today. Oh, no way. Kids yeah, back then were either less. made of sterner stuff or there's many, more uh, graveyards back then. And broken legs that, that thing 
you know? It, it must have been our, some. Our grandparents, the nurses, could tell yeah. stories. Uh, yeah, that's what these were called. They said, uh, I don't know, danger skates. That's another benefit of the Glendale show. Make sure you budget extra time for it, too, because there are going to be wild stories. Oh, I remember this guy over here. He's the one with all the cool tin toys. Look at that bomber. Look at that streetcar. Oh, look at the alligator. Ooh, and look at that Tunerville trolley. So many colors, so many shapes. Look at this, I've never seen this before in my life. Product of the Bing Crosby Research Foundation. The Junior Juke. I love all these mechanical toys. I love seeing them operate. It's so mind-blowing. You always have the coolest stuff. Think about how much care and attention it took to design those toys. <sighs> I just want to stay in here all day. Oh, look at those posters. Look at these magazines. Hey, what the heck? Wow, look at the wooden crates. Look at all of them. Those are incredible. Wait a minute, cow brand soda? All right, I think I saw a few more things I'd like to check out before we gotta go. It's just that there's so much good stuff and so, so very little time. Plus, these shows don't happen all the time. I think they only happen twice a year. In fact, I almost missed this one. Because as you know, Allie is about to have surgery literally any day now. She's not feeling good today. Plus, she wanted to clean with me out of the house. I am uh, not the best cleaning assistant, let's put it that way. But anyway, if you you want the scoop on when these are gonna happen just follow the glendale show on instagram that's how i remember dude that's incredible look at those old chicken dinner restaurant cups and is that a witco pelican old school tiki fans would love finding a witco in the wild actually speaking of old school tiki fans and getting a really good insider tip. There is one booth here that's a little more tropical than the others. It's the Peekaboo Gallery booth, and they aren't selling wares on their table. Oh no, what they're doing is advertising a very important forthcoming book about none other than my good friends Bob Van Oosting and Leroy Schmaltz, the two men who make up Oceanic Arts. The real life tiki room. The men who made tiki happen all over the country and around the world. Or as the brand new book phrases it, the godfathers of tiki. Now I have a review copy of this book. And so I will be talking more about this later. A whole video in fact. So this is kind of a little bit spoilery. But the book is going to be a little pricey, but let me tell you what. It is worth every red cent. Not only does it tell the story of Bob and Leroy in rich detail, but as you can see, every page is slam packed with the most amazing information about tiki bars and attractions all over the world. So go check it out, peekaboogallery.com. I think they're taking pre-orders right now. I'm not kidding, don't miss this book. You will not regret this purchase if you are into tiki stuff at all. Gosh, this stuff here is amazing. I'll just give you a look down just one random aisle. I mean, look at all the little plastic toys, the 8 by 10 Look at the old Raggedy Andy and Ann dolls. Look at all the vintage matchbooks, California raisins, old Peter Pan. I mean, there's so much stuff. Look around some people here. Vintage cars, board games of every size, shape, and description. Dude, look at this. Look at that thing right there. That is Incredible. An old Ramco set. How cool and retro futury is that thing right there? Look at that. Ooh, as seen on TV. Oh, and then right next door, a whole bunch of Batman stuff. At this point, I can't tell if it's just me or not. Like, you know when someone says, like, dude, I keep seeing double sevens everywhere. Everywhere I look, seven, seven. That license plate has a seven and a seven. Seven, seven. Watch, now you're going to see seven, seven. Or if it's actually happening. Dude, I skipped right past the foyer when I came in earlier. I missed out on checking out all of this stuff. Oh, look at that. The Duke. Oh, my gosh. Look at these maps. Holy moly. Woo. And check out these posters. <laughs> Ooh la la, ooh la la. Uh, anyway, like I said, Allie wasn't feeling great, so she didn't come with me. Plus, she's cleaning right now at the moment. But we're now literally just two or three days away from her checking into the hospital. And the closer we get, the more scared she gets, but the more I'll feel like, oh, I can finally rest because people who, who know more than me will be watching out for her and it won't just be me, you know? I don't know if that makes any, any sense, but it'll be a relief. Oh, look at those. Look at all the retro die-cast cars. Ooh, 
I want everything in this whole place. But especially one of these. One day I'm gonna get one of these. Because our house sits on land that was a sun-kissed orange grove. All right, well, as much as I might want this electronic microphone and some of the signs and vintage Disney stuff look like they might be fun to put in our booth, even if we took a loss on them. It's probably for the best if I try to escape out of here without spending too much money. I'm gonna need a lot of prayers. Ooh, oh my gosh. I made it out alive. And I only actually bought one thing, which was this road map of California back from the old Route 66 dates. I couldn't help myself, but otherwise I was pretty good. Your money's been kind of tight, not gonna lie. It's been hard to do much filming and adventuring uh, with all the medical stuff going on at home, which is why as scary as it is that it's getting closer, I'm also glad that it's getting closer. We're almost there. Until we're all the way there, though, I need to keep two eyes on that girl as often as possible. So break time's over now. I've done my duty here. It's time to go home and carve well. All right, well, it was only an hour-long drive back home, but looks like by the time I got here, Allie tuckered herself out. Poor little thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and let her keep on resting while she can. As you can see out here, we've made a bunch of progress since the last time you've seen this place. I still have about 5,000 projects to go, it feels like. In fact, there's a whole bunch that I wanted to show you and talk about in here. Now that I know Allie's down for the count again, I want to be inside watching her. Plus, it gives me something to show you next time. I'd be lying to you if I said that I wasn't tired and emotionally exhausted and experiencing the beginnings of a little compassion fatigue and all that. I know Allie's exhausted with being exhausted, but we're only a few days away from surgery. And uh, that means that the process of her actually healing and then getting back to some sort of amount of normal life is finally about to begin. I feel weird I haven't been on any road trip adventures or anything like that. I've just been watching, waiting, tense, making sure nothing happens and I don't have to rush her to the hospital. So the second she's actually in the hospital on purpose, and that they've taken out the blockage in her intestines and that, you know, it's not life or death every day depending on what she eats or all that stuff. I'm gonna feel a lot less tense and uh, maybe this twitch in my eye will finally go away, you know? It's been super, super rough. So I just wanna thank each and every one of you that's still watching the videos, sharing them, liking them, or who's checked out store.randomland.com. Fake Tyler has been helping us send out orders while Allie hasn't felt good. And especially to those of you on Patreon, we got some stuff coming for you pretty soon. Yeah, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm very exhausted, very, very tired. Even just doing that little thing today took a lot out of me because we've been home a lot, but it hasn't exactly been resting, you know what I mean, so. We will catch up and I will show you some of the projects I'm working on and show you more of that Tiki book next time. For now though, my friends, even though things are weird for the moment, I'm still keeping the quest for positivity strong. I may not be able to control the circumstances, but I can try to control my reaction to them. And I choose to keep faith and hope alive and I'm trying to choose not to get stressed out. Even though, like I said, I feel like I got hundreds of unfinished projects around here, some of which I will share with you next time. For now, though, I think we've done our duty. It's time to go home and sleep well. <laughs>
million dollars. So you would just skateboard with a two by four so and two skate wheels. I, I used a ski with steel from a wheel. snow ski. So he's the one <laughs> that invented the neoprene wheel. My wow. best friend. Yeah. yeah. Which is before wow. you before your time. But yeah. that was cool. And then he? he was then he did the truck. He was the inventor of the first skateboard. This first truck. skateboard so the truck. First two wheels wheel. that came out. One and was by sold, Cadillac and the other one was by Cadillac. Stoker. And the, the 80s, yes, but he did it in '65. Wow! When he saw me and his son skateboarding. That's incredible. And yeah. he goes, 